No, 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 I can't see it. Just pin me. Oh yeah, I just got it. Okay. So good evening, everyone. Welcome to day two of writing workshop. In today's workshop, we will be talking about editing. Editing is the most crucial part of your story writing process. A lot of kids, they tend to skip this. And, uh, you know, it's quite visible as a teacher that the child has missed this editing part because when it comes to punctuation, when it comes to speech marks, when it comes to spellings and grammatical errors, you know, it is evident that the child did not pay attention to these details. So let me take you through the slides here. Um, excuse me, ma'am. Yes. I had a question. Go ahead. I so wrote much. a story on grey books, and in that, um, there was this um, the Grammarly. Yes. Told me my introduction. It okay, said, sure. We will take that question after I finish the slide. All right. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, the first thing that you should be paying emphasis on while you are in the editing phase is replacing boring words with the vivid words. What do I mean by vivid words? It means that you are creating more clarity, more visualization in the reader's eye. So as I have shared the book here with you, Banish Boring Words, this works on the same mechanism. This is a beautiful word, uh, uh, workbook and this is going to help you. I will tell you how because once I finish Showing the slide, we will be working on something today. For instance, I've given a couple of examples here. I say in my, for, for example, I've just drafted my story and here I've introduced the character as a nice guy. While, the, while in the process of drafting, uh, editing, we will replace nice. Nice is definitely an adjective. So we can say extraordinary or you know any other positive adjective that I can use to describe this guy. Instead of said, definitely kids are aware of this fact that we should not be using said a lot of times. So we can say muttered, whispered, and many more other said words. Walk. So the, uh, a lot of times we say that this character walked down the street. But if we describe how exactly was his walking style, we would say that he trotted, he jolted, he sprinted, or he even ran. Pay emphasis on the tense here, okay? If I say walked, then it should have been trotted. But if it is walk, we will say trot, jolt, sprint, all right? So you can see that there is an error here. I have made that uh, error because I wanted to create this awareness in your mind that if in your draft you have mentioned something in present tense so any replacement of that word has to be in present tense all right the last word here is eat it can be gobble swallow and many more so if you want to know more of such identical words which we say synonyms you use this book i will be sharing how to use this book while you are in the process of editing the next slide Okay, so this is something that we will be talking about. But before that, I want to share something with you. So let's quickly open. Open the worksheet, children. And the book that you have with you. Amni Chachi, I didn't get the book because... It's oh, okay. I, I have couldn't... something here which I can share. All right. So this is something that I'm sharing with you, children. Post today's session, you can work on it. So I have taken screenshots of two pages where I want to pay emphasis on speech marks identification. Most of the times, kids make that error. 
punctuation you know start capitalizing the word is something that yes as parents we make sure that the child is not making that error but how about speech marks Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, I took out the printout of the sheets, but actually, yesterday I was I means moving from right. my so, office. Let's, let's focus on this story, Anvika, right now, okay? And then we can get back to you. So, can someone tell me? Can you tell me down. here? Can you tell me here which story this particular page is from? unmute and say anyone because you know i am sharing the screen so i would not be able to see your face can you tell me which story this is from ma'am the giant crocodile something like that enormous crocodile yes it is enormous crocodile yes and uh, roll down roll down ma'am it's written by roll yes enormous crocodile correct now have a look at the speech mark can you see now for clever trick number 1 can you see this anything within the quotation mark is known as speech mark which means that the author here is not narrating the incident but it is the characters in the story that is talking amongst themselves now for clever trick number 1 definitely you have to do voice modulation you you just can't talk in your own voice now for clever trick number 1 he whispered to himself it won't be long before i am eating the first part of my lunch i know it sounds hilarious but this is something that while reading aloud or while you are independently reading you have to pay emphasis on okay if we focus on the first sentence please pay attention to where we have used the full stop and how we have used a punctuation within the inverted comma now for clever trick number 1 there is an exclamation mark if there was no exclamation mark can someone tell me here what would i have used a full stop a comma or a question mark or nothing I want to replace the exclamation mark with something else. What should I, Shamoil? Go ahead. Maybe nothing or a question mark. I don't. Know. Okay. Anyone else here? A comma. Who is that? Anvika. Yes. So definitely there has to be a comma if you feel that none of the ex. exclamation or you know a question mark all these signs are not required you cannot keep it empty you cannot keep it empty shamoil there has to be a comma if you feel that it doesn't end with an exclamation mark or it doesn't end with a question mark you have to by default attach or you know include a comma another question is definitely there would have been a full stop definitely if it would have been written in the reverse order he whispered to himself a comma and then and then the quotation mark opens and then you write now for clever trick number 1 and close the inverted commas so now you tell me where will be the full stop within the quotation mark or outside the quotation mark shamoil ma'am within it has to be inside the quotation uh, inside the inverted comma if you have any question question here or you know if you are confused where exactly i should be placing these punctuation marks have a look at a lot of stories because then you will identify if if mm -hmm. something is written if a sentence is written in a particular order how exactly the author has placed the punctuation mark kids make a lot of mistakes here trust me children so apart from full stop if your quotation mark is inside uh, you know if if there's a quotation mark and 
it is not ending, you have to either add a question mark, an exclamation mark, or a comma. Okay, I'll be sharing another page from the same book. Now, this is a note that I have used for myself while I was teaching my child. This can't be a simile. Identification of met, uh, you know, metaphor, simile, or other literary devices when you are reading aloud to your kids is very important. Very, very important. Because then only you can yourself replace any uh, comparative adjective with a simile. What do I mean by that? You say that this is a tall man. You know, you describe your character that he is a tall man. Instead of now, you are in the editing process, right? You want to beautify your sentences, just like how you beautify your art. Writing is also just like that. So you pick up this sentence that he is a tall man. And can someone tell me that if I'm using a simile here, how can I edit this sentence? I want Samaira to take that question. Samaira, are you willing to answer this? He is a tall man. He is tall as a giraffe. He is as tall as a giraffe. You getting my point here? We added more visualization and more depth to our simple sentence, which was, he was a tall man. He is as tall as a giraffe. Now, this is simile. Whenever there's simile, we use as or like. If it's a metaphor, we would say he is a giraffe. You know, we can use like that. But again, it has to be presented properly. I'm just giving you an example. If you are comparing someone and you've not used as or like, but still you are comparing, you are using metaphor in it. Suddenly there was a tremendous whooshing noise. Can someone tell me if it would have been a boring sentence, how the author would have written here? Anyone, can you take that call here? Take this question. If it would have been a boring sentence. What's the next sentence? Suddenly there was a tremendous whooshing noise. Mom, can I try yes, this? Go, the go ahead. Mom, I think the author would make up it, edit it like there suddenly there was a uh, there was a, a loud whoosh like, no, like the no. I, wait, wait, Anvika, you are right, but again, I would say that we are in the editing process, right? The author has written this word. Suddenly, there was a tremendous whooshing error, uh, whooshing noise. What would have been the error made by the author? He would have definitely written like how Anvika said, suddenly there was a loud noise, isn't it? Basic sentence would be, there was a loud noise. That would have been the error made by the author. And during the editing process, because it's the draft that he's currently working at, so he would have written it as suddenly there was a tremendous whooshing noise. Don't you think it has more impact on the sentence, children? Shamoil? I Because I think you've not understood. Is there anything that I can help you with here? Um, I understood it. Because okay. instead of using uh, boring words like loud uh, like loud and fast we can use a uh, more um, like exciting words so it can attract the reader more correct correct and so for parents as i always say that working with the reverse psychology of a child works very well right it helps every time if we want someone to do something and we say like go get fetch me a glass of water the child will resist but if we say I don't want water from you. He's going to just run and get water, right? Similarly, if you are working on this particular topic, you can ask the child to make that error. So in the place of this beautiful sentence, you ask the child, how would have been the simple sentence? So that, you know, while they are working, they will omit that simple sentence that comes to their mind. And at that very moment, during the drafting process, 
he's going to think and he will present a better sentence to you. All right. Now, the last word, the last sentence here. Toto and Mary ran back to the town as fast as they could. Is it a simile? No, ma'am. It's not a simile because they are not comparing it with any word, anything. Yes, exactly. Because the answer is also written there. Thank you. But definitely, that is how. But if we say that they ran back to the town as fast as a cheetah, that would have been a simile, isn't it? Yeah? Okay. So this is something that I wanted to share here with you. Now let's open the homework sheet that I have shared. Excuse me, ma'am. Go ahead. Uh, ma'am, uh, you said that tremendous loud noise one so ma'am that was a simple one loud noise but in the in the editing part and it, it could be a simile also like it the sound came that strong as one giant has fallen down on the earth yeah but you have to edit the grammar mistake that you have just done you can definitely write it like that but you have to work on the grammatical errors Understood, Anvika? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So someone uh, just proposed this concept that when you're using simile, you're using only for characters. Do you think we can use simile to describe uh, the setting as well? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Similes can be used anywhere to this, you know, to compare anything and anyone. All right. So quickly take out the homework sheet and the book, the Banish Boring book that you have with you, and we will be working on it right now. Yeah, all ready? Yeah? Let's work on the first we would not be doing all the worksheets here because uh, we don't have that much time, but definitely I want to provide gist of this worksheet, you know, how you can do it at home as well. Adjectives about happiness. If you open the book, you have the chapter which is talking about feelings. Page number 38. Okay. And how about we replace happy with something else? Page number 39, everyone. Do you have this page ready with you? Yeah. So now replace this. Fill in the adjective steps as the steps rise. Use more dramatic adjectives. So instead of happiness, I can use anything. So I will be using blessed, blissful, cheerful, and just underline those words and write it on this steps, you know, the stairs that you see here. Quickly. Raita is asking if she can write her own words or the ones you've specified. No, she can write, choose any one from the list. Okay, any one from you. the list. Because also when you ask this question that, you know, uh, my child has limited vocabulary. If you're using this work, uh, workbook and you're working on editing, indirectly you are improving your child's knowledge of, you know, more synonyms and more, you know, adding more words to their vocabulary. So editing is a very important step because it is helping the child to increase their word list ecstatic delighted contented like what do you write on the steps any synonym for happiness, happiness. shriyadita do you have the workbook that i had shared banish boring word you have this book with you 
No, I don't have that, but I have the worksheet. Okay, Shraddha. So later you can use this book. Okay. This is the book. Okay. I've shared a PDF version of the book. You can take a printout and you can use it. It's it's very helpful, even for your school assignments. All right. How about height? Height can be big, small, tall, short, anything, right? So again, you go to the content page and see. Page number 40, big or small. All right, page number 40, big and small. If we have a look at the sentence there, a boring sentence was, the cat was big and the mouse was small. This is something that the child will write in their draft. But during the editing process, how well the child can write. The monstrously oversized cat towered over the teensy mouse. Now, we could have just written it as the oversized cat, but we wanted to describe the adjective. So we have used an adverb. Adverb ends with a lee most of the time. So we wrote the monstrously oversized cat. You know, we're trying to, uh, you know, uh, describe the cat's size even more. So that's the reason we've written one adjective and an adverb. So in the place of, you know, when you're talking about height, it can be tall or short. It can be big or small, isn't it? It depends what we are talking about. So replace it, use any of these words and write it there on your worksheet. Just give me a thumbs up once you're done. All right, now it is sound. Go to the, uh, go to the content page and have a look at the sound section. It's on page number 22. Now, if it is a pleasant sound, you can write melodic, melodious, rhythmical, symphonic, tuneful. If it's an unpleasant sound, you can write as deafening, ear piercing, monotonous, noisy, raucous, riotous. So many beautiful words. And if you're using this book over and over again, trust me, during your exam children, automatically you will come with all these words because it is somewhere in your memory. All right? So practice more from this book. The next editing that I want everyone to do is the second page. Have a look at this phrase. Imagine that you have written this paragraph. This is the first draft that you have created for yourself. And now during the editing process, children, you want to replace the boring adjectives with an impactful adjective. So instead of good, what would you like to write? I went to Japan for my holiday and it was such a good holiday. And I'm also want, I also want to share something. I also want to share, and Aheta, definitely I'll take this answer from you. But before that, when you are replacing this during your writing, trust me, when you are conversing with someone in English, next time you would not like to use good, but you will say splendid. I went to Japan for my holiday and it was such a splendid holiday. And then that person would be like, my God, the first impression that you would create in front of that person would be this child is a good reader. Okay, Anaheta, tell me. How would you like to replace good with quickly? Yeah, I'm new to Fantastic. Fantastic. Awesome. Now we have just Amazing. 10 minutes. We have 10 minutes, children. We will rejoin again using the same link. Quickly finish this paragraph. Grahil, how will you replace nice? Mom, great, great, great cherry blossoms. Is 
Okay. I want much better adjective for it. Shamoil, do you want to take the chance? We saw a lot of nice cherry blossoms and nice temples. Instead of nice, how would you replace this with? Extraordinary. Extraordinary is a hyperbole. Yeah. You know what? Just a second, Anaheta. If you write extraordinary, it's going to be a hyperbole because, you know, you're exaggerating. So try to avoid exaggeration at this moment. Yeah. Yes, Anaheta. Go ahead. Gorgeous. A gor yeah, a lot of gorgeous cherry blossoms. All right. And nice temples. See, Mom, nice maybe something as beautiful, right? Shamoy, yes. Tremendous. Tremendous. Tremendous is something massive and big. Here we are talking about nice. Nice means beauty. So it can be gorgeous. It can be something else. Also, we can say spectacular Ta temples, spectacular Ta temples. Ta yes, Ta uh, yes, yes, Ta go ahead. Grahil, go ahead. And then Anahita, you can also add to it. Mama, I, Mama, I see my going temples. Okay. Open page number 41 if you have the book. Shamoil, do you have the book with you? Page number 41, here we are talking about beautiful and ugly. Anaheta, open. Rahil, you have the book with you? All right. So as you can see mm -hmm. how helpful this book is. You agree or no? Guys, do you agree? This is a great book. Yes? I was thinking stunning. Definitely. A stunning view, a spectacular view. How about the temple? How would you like to describe the temple? Majestic? Because, you know, temples are huge. Marvelous. Marvelous, Marvelous. yes. Or Magnificent. maybe positive. Was, what? Maybe historic. Yes, historic is good because it's ancient uh, temple. So definitely historic. So are you coming up with more words? Uh, yes, Shriya I was saying positive. Not really. Not positive temples. Not really. Not a good fix there. See, as I opened this list, you know, as I opened this list, kids are coming up with more words. You know, more words. And when you're practicing it, you know, by default, the child will remember. If you just like that, if you tell them, okay, it's a majestic place, this and that, the probability that the child will remember it even after the class is less. But if he's working on with you right now, he will remember and he will, re, you know, try to use it again. Na Netik, Netik, go ahead, Bacha. The seafood, the next sentence, you're working on the next sentence, okay? The seafood. Mom, but I wanted to say about the temple. Okay, okay, Netik. Describe the temple. Maybe it can be monumental. Monumental. Okay. Yes, definitely. Definitely. If it's an adjective and if it is replacing nice, so definitely. So sometimes kids, we replace the word with the wrong part of speech. Isn't it? Sometimes we do that because we don't know which part of speech it is. It's not the basic word. You are listening to this word for the first time and you don't know if it's a verb or an adjective or an adverb. And if you replace there in the place of nice, which is an adjective, don't you think it's going to change the meaning of the sentence? Yes or no? Yes? Okay? So the, let's um, read. Yes, Shamoil? For seafood, um, can I say that the seafood, seafood that we had on the trip was melted in my mouth? You can definitely do that. The seafood that we had on the trip was so good that it melted in my mouth. Something like that. You have to describe it. Okay? It just melted in your mouth, but you're not describing the taste. Was it scrumptious? Was it delectable? 
So I want to say, I want to replace good with scrumptious. The seafood that we had on the trip was really scrumptious. And if you have come across this literary device, which means alliteration, try to use that also. If you have a lot of words beginning with S in your sentence right now, you choose an adjective that is starting with S. You're getting my point, children? The seafood that we had on the trip was really scrumptious. Although we have just two words beginning with uh, S, but definitely it's going to create more impact on the reader. Okay. We also saw a lot of nice souvenirs and tidbits. Instead of nice, how would you replace? What will you use? Shriyadita, go ahead. So, you know what's a souvenir? You know what's a souvenir? Uh, maybe a view or something. View? No, it is not a view. Grahil, no, what's a souvenir? Yes, Grahil, what's a souvenir? That we give. It's something that we get from the holiday, right? Uh, like a yes. memory from the holiday. It's a thing. It's a noun. Okay, Shradita, now that it is a noun, can you describe it? Replace nice with something? Maybe amazing or marvelous or awesome. Yeah, definitely. Maybe outstanding. Uh, not outstanding. Now, outstanding is not a good fit here. We saw a lot of marvelous souvenir. Definitely, it fits there. Any other replacement for nice children? <laughs> Anahita, go ahead. Those are so unique things. Yeah, unique. definitely unique souvenirs. Definitely unique. Netik, do you want to try? No? All right. Let's move to the next sentence. All the tidbits we saw had nice individual packaging. So here, Anahita, you can use unique. All right? Unique is a better fit here. I wish I could buy a little bit of everything home. It was a good trip. Instead of good trip, what would you like to use? Yes, Anahita. Memorable. Deepika. Memorable, yes. Tamaira, because you are you are on the next part of my screen, I can't see you. So next time, if you want to answer, just click the raise hand button. All right? Okay. Anaita, that answer is definitely a great one. Deepika, Samaira, can you answer? It was a good it was a fascinating trip. Great. And I wish I could go back there again. All right. So with that, we finished this paragraph. And the next question that often parents ask me is, what if my child is reluctant to rewrite these many sentences? You know, kids, they don't want to write sentences these days. How can you make them write? I would say that if your child is really reluctant, just avoid rewriting these sentences and ask them to replace the underlined words. If they just write the words on top of that, it is absolutely fine. Okay. Yeah. So thank you so much. You know, it was all about editing. And in the next part of today's session, we will be discussing about how artificial intelligence can help us. And also I will be sharing the draft and the editing process of my daughter's book, which got published on Brie Book and which is now also on Amazon. So the second book has got it. Oh, wow, Samaira, thank you. I'm yet to receive that book. So I, because you have that book and you have the fair copy, I'm sure you would want to see what went inside making that book. Isn't 